What really is empty space? I can't believe we haven't yet talked about this. Nothing deserves more attention. You've probably heard some physicists say that even empty space isn't really empty, that it contains something called vacuum fluctuations or zero-point energy, and that it's got something to do with the cosmological constant. There are also a bunch of guys who think that we can extract this vacuum energy and drive machines from it and well, you already know that this doesn't work, because if it did, someone would be taxing it. But just why does it not work? That's what we'll talk about today. In everyday language, vacuum is what's left from a volume if you remove all particles. It's the absence of particles, pure space. But if you take into account quantum physics, it's not that simple. According to quantum physics, quantum field theory to be more precise, Particles are just manifestations of fields. The fields tell you the probability for finding particles in certain places. But even if there are no particles, the field is still there to tell you that there are no particles there. The field is then in the state of lowest energy, often called the ground state. That the vacuum around us is not truly the ground state of quantum field theory, but a so-called force vacuum is why some particle physicists say that our vacuum is unstable and will eventually decay. If that happens, we'll all die very quickly. But don't worry, it'd happen faster than night, so we wouldn't see it coming. Sleep well. Now, you often hear people say, Say that in the vacuum there are still quantum fluctuations. But what this really means is that you can't really know for sure that a field is in the ground state at any particular place. The issue is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. If the field was in the ground state perfectly, then you'd know its energy, but then you couldn't be sure it won't change. So the expectation value, the mean value, is a constant, but there is a statistical spread around it. This really is the quantum fluctuation. It's the uncertainty. Physicists often calculate this by using virtual particles. This is another term which creates more confusion than clearing it up. A virtual particle is just a phrase that refers to Feynman diagrams, a method to calculate certain integrals. They're not in any sensible way physical objects. They're just a method to do calculations. No, really, all this talk about particles popping out of the vacuum and going going back into it. It's just words. It's words that describe integrals. It's integrals all the way down. Okay, but what about the expectation value, the average of the calculation that would tell you the energy of the vacuum? Well, in quantum field theory, this expectation value isn't observable. This is because we can't measure absolute energies. We can only measure energy differences. So one normally just defines the energy of the vacuum to be zero. That's right, it's zero by definition. But this definition only works so long as one ignores gravity, because energy gravitates and that changes space. Gravity tells you what the energy of the vacuum is, because now you have a way of measuring it. And this is what they call the cosmological constant. That's a manifestation of the energy in the vacuum. We still can't calculate this, of course, because remember that quantum field theory doesn't tell you what the energy of the vacuum is. You have to go and measure it from its gravitational effects. Physicists often use a naturalness argument to say that the vacuum energy should be huge. You've probably heard of this. This is then the supposedly worst prediction ever. I explained in a recent video why this argument is nonsense. That said, I've never liked the interpretation that the cosmological constant is evidence for a non-zero energy of the vacuum. For me, it's evidence that vacuum is not flat space. I'd say that the energy of empty space is zero, but its curvature isn't, because mathematically these two things mean the same. You see, have a look at Einstein's field equations. On the left side, you have the curvature contribution, the geometric part. On the right side, you have all the sources of energy that cause the curvature. Normally, physicists write the cosmological constant on the right side. 
as if it was part of the energy terms. Personally, I think it belongs on the left side. It's just part of the geometry. In any case, it's clearly a matter of interpretation whether the cosmological constant actually has something to do with the energy of the vacuum. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you understood. But regardless of how you interpret the cosmological constant, the vacuum is still the state of lowest possible energy. This is why you can't extract energy from it. It's already as low as it gets. Nevertheless, people keep trying to extract this zero-point energy, as they often call it. A famous patent in this category comes from Uwe Jörg in 1996. He wanted to arrange coils and magnets with the intention to make the zero-point energy spiral and then extract energy from it. That is, he thought that the vacuum is sort of a medium that can be directed which, well, it isn't. The patent is quite a read, by the way. The inventor also claims that the zero-point energy is of spiritual nature and that this universal spirit entered his brain, which led to this amazing invention that, alas, never produced any energy. There are a bunch of similar patents, like this one from Thomas Bearden in 2022, that again uses a lot of coils and magnets to allegedly trap vacuum energy. Or this one from Richard Lighthouse, who wants to extract angular momentum from the vacuum and then generate energy from that. Problem is, the vacuum has no angular momentum. A slightly different take is this one, which tries to use the Casimir effect as an energy source. The Casimir effect is pressure that you can generate by locally changing the vacuum. The most common way of doing this is to take two conducting plates. The plates have no charge. They must just be able to conduct electricity, because then the quantum fields between between the plates must fit into that space with their wavelength. The plates create a boundary condition that makes it impossible for some wavelength to fit there. This then means there are more quantum fluctuations outside the plates than inside, which creates a pressure from the outside, so a force pushing the plates towards each other. This is the Casimir effect. This effect is tiny but real and has been measured. However, it doesn't create energy, because you need energy to put the plates into place and push the vacuum aside, so to speak. You can then get this energy back out, but no net generation. The bottom line is that all these ideas about driving machines with the zero-point energy are pseudoscientific quackery. Don't fall for them. There's nothing in the vacuum you can extract, not energy, not angular momentum, and definitely not enlightenment. Just leave it alone. It's already doing enough by not decaying. Physics is fascinating, not just because it's useful, but because it tells us so much about the world. And it isn't as difficult as some of my colleagues make it sound. If you've always wanted to learn physics, but didn't know where to start, I recommend you have a look at Brilliant. That'll really help you. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. If that sounds good, you can try it for free. Just use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code and you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.